for me. <laughs> but my goodness, thank you all very much. Because I should be applauding you, or we should be applauding each other, because uh, this wasn't a solo job. Can you hear back there? Yeah. All right. <laughs> this wasn't a solo job by any manner of means. You've just been the greatest team. And it's been such a joy to work with you. And I never get much of a chance to say thanks for all that you do. But uh, God bless you. I guess it all came out pretty much all right last night. <laughs> just wonderful I could say to you to take the rest of the day off. <laughs> I'd be sitting in there all alone and nothing would go on. <laughs> well, I guess maybe we'll all do what the little girl wrote me in the letter about the first week that I was here eight years ago. And she told me all, and she had them all down, the major issues, the deficit, everything that we must take care of. And then she wound up her letter saying, now get back to the Oval Office and get to work. <laughs> You've all been just great. What for the Gipper. <laughs> well, a few people out on the road, I've, uh, I've been asking that win one for the Gipper thing, but I also told a few people now and then some stories that we didn't have in the movie. <laughs> a rather unusual fellow, and uh, very much beloved by even the townspeople there. He was older than the average fellas, so am I. <laughs> one story that maybe might, uh, might apply here. He was out and around on a Friday night before a game at Notre Dame, which was then just a little Midwestern college. And uh, they were playing a team called Valparaiso Tech. Well, now in those days, the technical schools, football teams, like West Point and Annapolis then, were made up of fellows that had already played <laughs> varsity football at another school or university. So it was sort of like moving into the National Football League. And uh, this was true of Valparaiso Tech. And this fellow in this particular place, at a pool hall where George was the night before the game, was sounding off about that if it wasn't for a fellow named George Gipp, Notre Dame wouldn't even be able to get on the, on the schedule. And uh, George finally collected some money from some friends around in the room and then assailed this fellow and said, you're shooting off your face a lot about Notre Dame and George Gipp. I got $65 here that says Notre Dame will win by two touchdowns and Gip won't make a point. Well, the fella grabbed the bet <laughs> twice the next day. Gip took the ball and ran all the way to the goal line and fell down. <laughs> the next two plays, other people took the ball. And, uh, I guess maybe I don't think we stopped short of the goal line on this one. We, we carried the ball all the way and helped. I'm, I'm going to win there now because I think you should get off that wet grass and not catch cold. <laughs> I need all of you very much. General Soyster, Mr. President. Hello, Mr. President. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Tom Donahue. Nice to see you. 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 Jerry Young, Deputy Director of NSA. Nice to see you. Colonel Gary Sotnis, recently retired from the Executive Officers.
Pat Heishman, who was my secretary then. Right here. John Sagronis, who's my teacher. Hudson, Mr. Seymour. Carol Lynch, who used to work over here. Jay Keith. Well, yes. yes. well, I think you and I yes, will sir. go over here in front of the fireplace. And why don't you come and get real close and watch it? Citation to accompany the award of the National Security Medal to Lieutenant General William E. Odom, United States Army, retired. Lieutenant General William E. Odom has distinguished himself as an intelligence officer of the highest caliber, a skillful leader, and an expert of wide renown on the Soviet Union. As the Director of National Security Agency, Chief Central Security Service, he has, through bold initiative, inspired imagination, and unparalleled strength of leadership, set the U.S. Signals Intelligence System on a proper course to meet the formidable challenges of today and of the future. General Odom leaves a legacy to this agency, the intelligence community, in this country that reflects the ultimate in dedication, commitment, and excellence. Congratulations, and I'm very pleased and proud of you to do this. Thank you very much, Mr. This is my Hello. wife, Bonnie. Hello, Mr. President, how are you? You, you? you see my button? <laughs> well, for heaven's sake. We've all got them on. We're going to take them off. <laughs> my daughter, Susie. Yes, hello, Susie. My son, Richard. Nice to meet you, Mr. President. Nice to see you. Son, David. Hello there. How are you? And son, Rob. Hi, Mr. President. Nice to meet you. Mr. President, I've been in Congress now 12 years. And I just want to tell you, come on in, folks. Uh, I think we've got to have a group. Yeah, yeah, I want to tell you, it's been an honor and a privilege to serve under you. And I want to congratulate you on handing on the baton over the uh, just well, yesterday. And you've and just been great for this yeah. country. Why don't a couple of you come down here and stand on the president's other side? You ought to be between us. Thank you. You, you are like your popcorn and he knows the camera angles. Right. He knows the camera angles. You just right. get in a little bit closer. Bonnie, the button. You want to pick up the button for this one? Oh. Okay, leave the button okay. on. There Everybody we go. Everybody turn slightly sideways and move more towards the center. That's right. How are you? Good. Hey, how are you? Move in closer. So you can come in just yeah, a little just, bit. Yeah. Just walk right up. There you go. Thank you. A little closer. And I don't mind that. <laughs> All right. There we go. Thank you. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. President. We want to wish you the best of luck. Really. We we'll miss it, you. It, it, it's been great. You've been great. You're going to go down as one of all time greats. Thank you. You're nice to get out of bed and do this for us this morning. <laughs> We're thrilled. We can hardly get out of bed. <laughs> we were up with our popcorn until 1 o'clock, and I thought it was a late night for you. Well, but they gave me a late start. I wasn't due in until 10 o'clock this morning. Well, thank you. It's a privilege. And We're I really have something honored. I could confide in you that sometime in the future you will discover that uh, uh, the books and the reports are right. That uh, I was always an eight hour a night fella for sleeping. <laughs> then you find out it only takes six. I'm awake in the morning <laughs> whether I have to be or not. I know it. I'm not happy it. about it. Now, Nancy's schedule still has her going to sleep much later than me. And uh, and therefore she's very sound asleep in the morning. That's the way we are. I don't know what do you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, 
Well, I hope you'll uh, help us uh, take control of the Congress in two years or four years or whatever it takes. But uh, we've got to get the What's Republicans. What's the secret to that? We I'm need looking to forward do to getting out of the mashed potato circuit once I'm out of this job. <laughs> Start to arouse the people to get some changes made. They've that congressional it. thing, you know, is more than 50 years of them being in charge of the real. <laughs> Mr. President, Dr. Rabani. Good to see you. Uh, Mr. President, I'm the yes. interpreter. Haji Din Muhammad. Mr. Mr. Well, why don't we come in? General Powell. Nice to see you. You'll be there. There's people over there.